Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Can I help you? Good morning, Constable. I would like to speak to the fellow who was arrested at Woodman's Lee last night. Ah, oh, the young man. He's waiting in the interrogation room. You can go straight through. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Thank you. These are the suspect's belongings. From R. Dawson. To my friend and partner, 1883. Dawson, I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive holds the answer. handkerchief with the initials J.H.N. The notebook that we found on Peter Carey's cabin floor. These abbreviations mean something, but what? A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. Mr. Holmes? The police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. The ring's date of engraving is many years ago. You would have been a child then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? The ring is mine. No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Oh, but, but, but how do you know? 
The jacket you are wearing is made of an expensive fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else, most probably your father. With your father gone and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working, I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. Does this notebook belong to you? Yes. But where did you find it? I did not know... I, I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh, no. I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out eventually, Mr. Nelligan. The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carey try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone. Well, I will see you soon, young man. Please, let me go. I'm innocent. I need to stage a reconstruction. I am sure that Watson would be happy to oblige. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Mr. Holmes? At your service, Mr. Holmes. Brave Toby, the best nose in the British Empire. A spot of whaling, Watson. Would you care to take part? Are you serious? No, but we do need to clarify what happened on the night of Black Peter's murder. A reenactment, then? Is something bothering you? The sailor's knife, Watson. Why was it on the floor? Peter Carey attempted to defend himself? It is possible. But if that is the case, then it alters many things. I don't quite follow you. Tell me, my friend, what is the animal closest to man? Morphologically, I mean. Ah, I see what you're getting at, Holmes. You asked me that once before. On the Ripper case, I believe. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? No. Thank goodness for that. 
I wish to impale one with a harpoon. Wonderful. Watson, let us pay a visit to our butcher friend in Whitechapel. We require the carcass of a well-fed pig. And the harpoon? One of the harpoons on the wall of Black Peter's cabin should do quite nicely. I need to take a harpoon with me. ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. Hmm. The ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. for the experiment. These footprints appear to be quite large. Well, here we are in the preparation room. I can't say that I like the smell of it much. What do you intend to do? To indulge myself in a little experiment. The challenge of lancing a pig's carcass with a heavy harpoon. A little experiment? Stand aside, Watson. This might be dangerous. I am not well practiced in this exercise, yet. Holmes, you should aim for the mark in order to perform the most reliable test. The harpoon has struck the body, but with insufficient strength to pierce it straight through. Holmes, you should try to aim better and throw as hard as you can. The harpoon has struck the body, but with insufficient strength to pierce it straight through. Holmes, you should try to aim better and throw as hard as you can. The harpoon has struck the body. Holmes, you should try to aim better and throw as hard as you can.
This is the best possible result that I could get. Do you see, Watson? Throwing a harpoon and pinning a man to a wall requires either exceptional strength and training or diabolical luck. If it was luck, then it was a chance in a thousand that night. Well, yes. Let us leave now. All right. But before we go, I, I suppose I'll have to pay for all these carcasses you've happily mangled. Very well, but please hurry. Of course. Good gracious, you caught someone. At least now you have a suspect. Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. This is where I keep my post. That is not the one I need. Here it is. Now I begin to understand that young man's story, but I am still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. I have heard the story of Dawson and Nelligan, the West Country bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. When the bank failed, it ruined half the families of Cornwall. 
whereupon Joshua Nelligan disappeared. My father was under extraordinary pressure. Dawson had retired. I was only ten years of age at the time, but it was still old enough to feel the shame that befell our family. My father was convinced that he could pay off all his debts if the creditors gave him time. He set sail for Hammerfest in Norway in his small yacht just a few days before an arrest warrant was issued. He left my mother a list of the securities he was taking. No word was ever heard from him again. We believed that his vessel went down, taking with it everyone and everything on board. Thank you for the story, Mr. Nelligan. At last, we are making some progress. Interesting. Joshua Nelligan and Peter Carey were both at sea in Norway. There is definitely some connection between Peter Carey and Joshua Nelligan's disappearance. What am I doing here?